Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Marine Baptist Church Sunday service. Our word for the day is COVID, and it's not going to be anything like the other COVID stuff you've been hearing about, so please stay tuned. Let's stand and sing hymn number 171, Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth. The Savior reigns. Let men their song employ, while fields and floods, like hills and plains, repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrows. Nor thorns and fast the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow. For as a curse is found, for as a curse is found, for as for as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace. And nature the nation's prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love. Let's remain standing for a word of prayer. Dear God, thank you for allowing us to be part of your assembly of the called out and for this day and your presence. I pray that you will bless us with your word and your Holy Spirit, that you will guide us in your way and that you will be glorified in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Let's turn to hymn number 82, Victory in Jesus. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood's atoning I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him. All my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing of his cleansing heart revealing how we made the link to walk again and cause the blind to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, 
my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him, and all my love is to Him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion He has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing after the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior. Sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. At this time, I'm going to ask Marcia to come and sing, Why Me, Lord? <clears throat> While she's coming, let me tell you that the pictures that we use display on the screen are on Facebook, Marine Baptist Church Sunday Service. And they're there for you to look in case you don't understand something that we've said or, or want to refer back to it for later. Marsha? I mean, Lord, what have I ever done to deserve even one of the pleasures I've known? Tell me, Lord, what did I ever do that was worth loving you or the kindness you've shown?
Wow, that's a hard act to follow. That was really good. Thank you, Marcia. Um, our daily bread this morning is from uh, September 21st, and it's called Making Peace with Trouble. The Bible verse is, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. We were almost home when I noticed it. The needle of our car's temperature gauge was rocketing up. As we pulled in, I killed the engine and hopped out. Smoke wafted from the hood. The engine sizzled like bacon. I backed the car up a few feet and found a puddle beneath, oil. Instantly I knew what happened. The head gasket had blown. I groaned. We just sank money into the other expensive repairs. Why can't things just work? I grumbled bitterly. Why can't things just stop breaking? Can you relate? Sometimes we avert one crisis, solve one problem, pay off one big bill, only to face another. Sometimes those troubles are much bigger than an engine self-destructing, an unexpected diagnosis, an untimely death, a terrible loss. In those moments, we yearn for a world less broken, less full of trouble. That world, Jesus promised, is coming, but not yet. In this world, you will have trouble, he reminded his disciples in John 16. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus spoke in that chapter about grave troubles, such as persecution for your faith. But such trouble, he taught, would never have the last word for those who hope in him. Trouble small and large may dog our days, but Jesus' promise of a better tomorrow with him encourages us not to let our troubles define our lives today. And the prayer is, Father, troubles never seem far away, but when they're close, you're even closer. Please help me to cling to you and trust today. Amen. Today's Bible verse, Job asked, What is man that thou shouldest magnify him, and, thou, and that thou shouldest set thine heart upon him? And he was speaking to God when he asked that. Let's pray. Dear God, I pray that you will show us your word. Help us to understand what it means and apply it to our lives in order to make us wise in your ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you know the story of Job? Job 1.6 Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. God asked Satan, where have you been? Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. The Lord said, have you noticed Job? Satan said, yes, I have, but he's only good because you bless him and protect him. Take that away, and he will curse you. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy, thy power, only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Satan attacked Job's children, his livestock, his servants, and no matter what he did, Job continued to worship God. Satan came back into heaven, and one of the things this story shows us is that Satan is still in heaven. He's allowed to come into heaven, and He's, he does get thrown out in Revelation. And uh, I think Michael the angel throws him out, and that's when he comes to earth, and, and that's the uh, period of Revelation. But for now, he was still allowed in heaven. He came back. He told God, 
if you take Job's health, then Job would curse God. God told him, give it your best shot, but you are not to touch Job's life. Satan went forth from God's presence, smote Job with boils. He was scraping his sores with a piece of pottery when his wife showed up. Her advice was, curse God and die. Job told her, you speak as one of the foolish women. And Job would not speak against God. Job survived Satan, and God blessed him with twice as much as he had before. God saved Job, and he saves, has saved others. But I like what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego told King Nebuchadnezzar when he was threatening to throw them in the furnace because they would not bow down to his idol. Daniel 3.17 If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. We lost a friend a few years back, a lady, and she said that she was battling cancer, and she says, I know God can deliver me, but if he doesn't, I'm better, because I'm going to go and be with him. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 2.9, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Later, Paul wrote Timothy, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. And Paul was facing death when he wrote that. And he was a wonderful apostle and follower of Jesus. And he wrote about three-fourths of the books that are in the New Testament. And he went all over the world witnessing, and, and he was a missionary to, to foreign countries. And you can see why he would say, there is a crown of righteousness laid up for me because of all these wonderful things that he did. But there's a second part to this verse. The, the other part of 2 Timothy 4.8 tells us, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing, that love Jesus. That's a promise for us. I went and researched the word COVID. God gave me the word COVID in the middle of the night, and I said, okay, so I'm used to this. He gives me a word, and then I go and I research and try to find out what it means and, and try to determine what it is that, that he wants us to know. And I found that co is short for corona. 
And you've seen the pictures of the virus and it's got like a little round ball and it's got all these little things that look like little crowns coming out of it. And I think that's why they call it the coronaviruses because it, it looks like little crowns. V for virus, I think VI for virus and D for d disease in their term. But VID is also um, a, a form that, that stands for C or life. Okay, but, uh, but I latched on to Corona is short for crown. And here the angel in Revelation is holding the golden crown that Paul talked about and that we're promised. And, um, and the, the message for today is they can't hurt us. Nobody can hurt us when we're in Jesus. Paul also wrote, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Let's bow our heads, word of prayer. Dear God, I pray for the people who hear your word that they will accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I pray that you will fill them with your Holy Spirit, show them the path that you have for their life and that you will guide their steps. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you.